on today's program, we're going to be butchering up a beef pismo. Inside this pismo is the tenderloin. Pismo stands for. Now, now, today. Peeled side muscle on Pismo. Side muscle will be the chain. I'm going to break these down and show you the different parts of the tenderloin here. This one is a Texas Wagyu. We're going to open it up and start trimming it out. So, the first thing you want to do when you're messing with a big hunk of meat like this is pat all the excess blood off. I don't like rinsing them because then you lose some of that flavor, so you don't want to rinse it. Just pat that excess blood off so it doesn't slip when you're cutting it up. So as we roll up the tenderloin here, I go through the pots of the tenderloin. You're going to have your tail here. It's a thin piece. Here in the middle, you're going to have where you cut your fillets out of. This side is going to peel away here like so. That's your chain. Up in here, you got your Chateaubriand on this side, and then over here is your uh, your muscle roast right up here. And as we cut this down, I'll show you all the parts again. But this piece here, the chain, peels away. So we can start with this chain here, taking removing the chain. As you can see here chain will just peel away for the most part with a few simple trims if needed. Get up in here, cut a little connective tissue off. Take that chain off there. Now there's some good meat inside the chain, I'll get to that in a bit. Then you're down We need to remove some of this fat. So, there's a piece of silver skin right in here, you can see. Get up under that silver skin there. Now this is inedible. You can't chew that stuff, so you're just gonna remove all that. Like so. So here we are. We all trimmed out now. And I'll kind of show you the way a restaurant would cut this. So when you're paying for a center cut fillet, you're paying for this piece from about here to about here. This area right in here. That's your center cut. Fillet mignon. If you see in the menu, it's a Chateau Chateaubriand. It's going to be this head piece up here. And a lot of restaurants will actually tie this off with butcher's twine to make it look like a uniform steak, but it's actually your know, pieces folded together here. Top of the chain, your chateau, and your roast piece. Now, this is a, these are smaller cows, so a lot of your standard tenderloins are going to be probably out to here. So you, get, you can actually cut this piece off and cut steaks out of it, and a lot of them will do that because it's... It's a cost effective way. This one being a Wagyu, smaller cow, so don't get quite as much, uh, it's not as big as a commercial tenderloin would be. A lot of times too, just uh, a restaurant will cut this, this tail right here and then fold a piece, cut it here, score it right here, fold it over and make that a filet. So there's lots of tricks to the trade there and you get what you pay for. So make sure you're getting what you pay for because this is the most expensive piece right here. If you're paying for that and you're getting this, you ain't getting as good a piece of meat. So that I tell by trimming the very end of it off and scoring it right there. A lot of your restaurants use this piece right here as a flea. And that's fine. It tastes great. Nothing wrong with that. 
But if you ever notice your steak looks like, why is it two pieces? That's why they're using the very tail there. And when you mark it up and put it on a plate that way, you can't tell the difference. Most people can anyway. Unless you're a chef and you're like, well, why am I getting a tail piece? And from that point, you can start cutting steaks about yay big. I like to do about six ounce pieces. And as it gets a little thicker, you, you shrink your size down to make it six ounces. So there's all of our center cut pieces there. We end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that fold over, nine. And we end up with four of the inferior steak. And what this is, that's the that's the chateau and that muscle piece wrapped together to make a steak. As you can see, beautiful steak, good quality. Not as good as this one. You see the marbling and all in the center. And the head up here, you don't have that same marbling, so it's not quite as tasty and not quite as tender as that center cut is. I hope you guys can see the difference. I hope the camera does it justice, but still good quality steak, but not not that filet mignon from the middle. So a lot of the time I will take the chain and grind it up in my grinder here and make hamburger meat out of it. However, today I'm just trimming it out, making taco meat out of it. You trim out all this silver skin and fat here. There'll be a nice hunk of meat in there. Along with some of the other hunks of meat. And we'll have some taco meat. Street taco meat. So when you're trimming out the chain here, you're just taking all this connecting tissue and all silver skin out of here. Now, trade secret from the restaurants is this meat in here usually gets used as family dinner every night, like family style dinner for the employees. This gets turned into tacos most of the time, because a lot of your kitchen's Hispanic. This gets meat gets turned into tacos. Sometimes uh, it could turn into like beef tips and rice or whatever. But it gets turned into family style meal. So I'll trim this on out. Make a pile of taco meat. And we'll freeze it or cook it up for dinner. So now it's time to get the food saver out, like a Ziploc food saver, however, whatever brand you got. I got a Ziploc one. Go ahead and start packing these up in twos or threes or fours, however you like. Freeze them. We got some taco meat from the chain and the trimmings. We got those chate chateau cuts right there, uh, as well as nine steaks. So that's a hundred, about a hundred twenty-four dollars worth of meat. That's what it looks like when it all cut up. So now you know why your steak costs so much. Actually, it's about $140 worth of meat. I'm sorry. Now it's time to vacuum seal these up. First, the taco meat. Then we'll do the steaks. I got the Ziploc system, but you can use Food Saver, whatever brand you got. Don't forget to use a Shopee and label and date your contents here so you can remember what day you pack these steaks and you can have steaks anytime you want throughout the rest of the winter because you just pull out a few at a time, seal them off, grill them up, whatever you like, and taco meat. Well, I hope this, this video here was educational and informative to you. Show you how to do this at home. You can save some money and have steaks all year round. Thanks for joining me today, and as always, have a good day.